we are the Bowtie Travelers. Welcome to Venice. Venice, with its magical, spectacular scenery, is not just a beautiful city. It is a real miracle of creative genius. A city built on mud, sand, and slime of a difficult, inhospitable landscape. Venice is unique. When you are visiting European cities all the time, things can become a bit of the same. They all have museums, art galleries, castles, and so on. A lot of European cities are very similar. And really, I dare to say, show nothing new. Then comes along Venice. A city where roads are replaced with water where steps lead down into rivers, where you have water taxis, buses are replaced with Vaporetto. Venice is one of the cities where you don't have to do anything specific except wander, taking the views and it's still going to be a great day. The Vaporetto is the main form of transport in Venice. Yes, you can catch a train into the main station. And yes, you can walk on foot through the street. But to truly experience Venice, you must experience it from the water. The Vaporetto system is highly efficient and it's one of the quickest ways of traveling to the various islands of Venice. We are in a photographic spray in Venice and then the combination of water, amazing buildings and bridges and also gondolas can produce excellent pictures. We spent two days on photographic spray in Venice. In those two days, we have taken pictures of, amongst others, Ponte di Rialto. Grand Canal. Piazza San Marco and St. Mark's Campanile. Basilica di San Marco Doge's Palace Bridge of Size Island of Durano We hope this will inspire you for your next sightseeing adventure to Venice. Day 1 Ponte di Rialto and the Grand Canal Piazza San Marco San Marco Church and St. Mark's Campanile Dodges Palace. We started our photographic spray and sightseeing in Venice from the Ponte di Rialto. As one of the bridges that spans the impressive Grand Canal, the Ponte di Rialto is undoubtedly the most famous and iconic. While on the bridge, you can contemplate the activities of gondolas and vaporettos traveling up and down the Grand Canal.
Venice has literally hundreds of canals that connect the various islands that make up the city, the largest of which is the Canale Grande. This monumental canal is more like a river and it passes from one side of Venice to the other and snakes through the center in a large S band shape. Over 170 buildings dating from as early as the 13th century line the banks of the canal and it has served as an important waterway in the city for hundreds of years. The Ponte di Rialto is the oldest of the four bridges that spanning the Grand Canal. The design of the bridge is beautiful and its symmetry perfectly frames the Grand Canal. Six minutes walk from Ponte di Rialto, we reached Piazza San Marco, in English, St. Mark Square. Considered one of the finest squares in the world and certainly Venice's prime attraction, it is surrounded on three sides by the stately arcades of public buildings and on the fourth by Basilica di San Marco's riot of domes and arches and the soaring St. Mark's Campanile. We came up with some great photos of the square. Apart from St. Mark's Basilica, St. Mark's Campanile constitutes a dominant feature of the square. St. Mark's Campanile is the bell tower of St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. It is the tallest structure in Venice and is colloquially termed El Paron de Casa, the master of the house. It is one of the most recognizable symbols of the city. Basilica di San Marco is the most important church in the city and one of the most important monuments in Italy for its opulent design, the gold grand mosaic. From the 11th century, the building has been known by the nickname of Chiesa de Oro, Church of Gold. Just a few steps from the square, you have the Doge's Palace, Palazzo Ducale in Italian. Since 1996, the Doge's Palace has been part of the Venetian Museum's network. The palace is one of the most important buildings in Venice. Apart from being the Doge residence, Doge meaning the Duke of Venice, the elected ruler of Venice, it is where some of the most important decisions for Venice and even Europe's destiny were taken. The exterior of the Doge's Palace has two main facades. One faces the Piazzetta di San Marco section of Piazza San Marco, while another faces the lagoon. A third facade faces a canal, Rio di Palazzo, which is crossed by the Bridge of Sighs. Let's check out lagoon activities. Gondolas. Here we have been able to take a popular photo. When you tap Venice on Google and you go to images, you'll definitely find this photo taken by somebody else. This is quite a popular photo. Just to make it more obvious, let's type Venice Gondolas on Google. Here you are. This is another one.
this is another taken from another angle. The third facade of the Doge's Palace faces Rio di Palazzo Canal, crossed by the bridges of size Ponte dei Sospiri, one of the most famous. The bridge of size was built to connect the old prison in the Doge's Palace with the new prison across the river. It's called the Bridge of Sides. Those who crossed the Bridge of Sides were likely going to be incarcerated for a very long time. So the theory is that those who traversed sides as they looked out and saw the last side of freedom. It said that if a couple in a gondola kisses as they pass under the bridge at sunset, as the bell of St. Mark's toll, their love will last forever. Wandering through the streets of Venice, we encountered the Chiesa di San Zaccaria, 11 minutes walk from the Ponte di Rialto and just steps away from the usually popular and bustling Piazza San Marco. The 15th century church of St. San Zaccaria is a church dedicated to St. Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. I'm curious how it looks inside, but I think it's closed. 6.30. Day two, a day trip to the island of Burano, Arsenal of Venice. In our second day, we headed to the island of Burano. As we were on a photographic spree, we found out that there is an island with colorful houses. We could only guess that a colorful island will generate great photos. We decided to check it out and we were not disappointed. Oh, so cute. Burano is 40 minutes away from Venice by Vaporetto. It is a north fishing village and the fishing traditions of Burano date back to Roman time. Approaching the island, colorful houses started to unfold in front of us. It was amazing to see such a mixture of colors. Getting off the Vaporetto, we were welcomed by an unusual sculpture of a woman. It is the Swazi Yesu sculpture depicting a woman expressing complete despair. Many Buranis men are fishermen or watermen, so one may speculate that the sculpture is grief and despair for a loved one lost at sea. And this was our first picture in the Burano Island. Legend says the houses of Burano were painted in bright colors so that fishermen could find their way home when it was foggy. Over a period, a specific coloring system developed. Wow! This is so colorful! If someone wishes to paint their home, one must send a request to the government, who will respond by making notice of certain colors permitted for that lot. It's a multicolor city. Wow.
iconic baby's house is the most colorful house in the island. Giuseppe Toselli, known as Beppe, was the owner of the house, a cinema operator and a well-known figure of the island, and passed away in 2002. He was always with paint brushes and color decorating. This is actually the most colorful house in the colorful city of Burano. Another interesting feature of Burano Island is the Leaning Bell Tower, which constitutes subject of great photography. Back to Venice, with a bit of time on our hands, we went to the arsenal of Venice. Since the beginning of the 12th century, the arsenal was the art of the naval industry of Venice. It occupies quite a large area of the city, almost 15% of the world territory of Venice. A clear sign how important this industry was for Venice. The Naval Museum of Venice is also located in the area. finish in style our photographic spray in Venice. We went to see one of the last traditional gondola makers in Venice, where we took our last shot. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel. Next time we are taking you to Buenos Aires, Argentina. Till then, keep traveling. See you.